It's been 13 years since the terrorist attacks of September 11, 2001. Nearly 3,000 people lost their lives. For three Westfield families, life was forever changed on that day. Each year since then, at the Sons of Aaron in Westfield, a ceremony is held for the three Westfield natives who lost their lives in the World Trade Centers. Steve Kiltonic now has the story of lives lost and remembered. On September 11, 2001, America's innocence was lost as a terrorist attack on the World Trade Center and Pentagon became our 21st century's day of infamy. Nearly 3,000 Americans lost their lives that day, including three Westfield natives, Tara Creamer Shea, Brian Murphy, and Daniel Trant. Tara was a passenger on Flight 11, which crashed into World Trade Center's North Tower, where Brian and Dan worked on the 104th floor with Cantor Fitzgerald. All three grew up in strong Irish Catholic families with deep Westfield roots. The Shays and Murphys were parishioners of St. Mary, while the Trants attended Immaculate Conception. Jim Shea, a former superintendent of schools in Westfield, raised his six children with his late wife Colleen in the same house he's lived for the past 49 years, not far from Stanley Park. On the wall leading up the stairs are pictures of the Shea children, each with a baby and high school graduation photo. Tara was the fifth child in the Shea clan. Jim's face lights up when he talks about Tara. Outward personality, uh, loving, she'd tell you what she thought. After high school, Tara went off to the University of Massachusetts, where she majored in fashion merchandising. Here, she also met her future husband, Brian Creamer. They eventually had two children, Colin and Nora. She was dedicated to her family, her kids, her husband. Family was everything to her. Brian Murphy was the third of four Murphy children. And the oldest is that her brother embraced life. Brian had a great spirit of adventure. He was, uh, whatever he did, he did uh, full out. He was the nicest young man, always so kind and thinking of others and extremely intelligent, outstanding vocabulary, really a good student. You know, you couldn't ask for a better brother. In fact, probably the four hallmarks of Brian's life were family, faith, friends, and fun. <laughs> Murphy went on to work on Wall Street as a stockbroker. He was pioneering the electronic trading of bonds, and that's how he ended up at Cantor Fitzgerald on the 104th floor of the World Trade Center. In New York, Brian met the love of his life, Judy. They had two girls, Jessica and Lila. Dan Trant was one of eight children born to Mary and William Trant, who was a postmaster in town. Here at Westfield High School, Trant was a standout athlete in both basketball and soccer. In 1979, he was all Western Mass on the hard court, and he still holds the school record for most points scored in the game, 47. He went on to a stellar career at Clark University, where he was a two-time All-American and led his team to the Division III Finals. Yep, Bill ahead. Daly was Dan's basketball coach for three years at Westfield High. He recalled Dan's work ethic. Yep. Before the summer is over, he went through six basketballs. Uh, he shot and shot and shot till the hand, his hand was raw. His hand got was bleeding because the, the leather basketball would, would cut from the asphalt. Teammates gave him the nickname, the Iceman. Danny Trant uh, just knew what to do with the ball. He's cool, calm, never, never panicked. If he had the shot, he took it. If they converged on him, he, he, had, he was a wizard with the basketball too. On the night Dan set the school record with 47 points against Pittsfield, he was 20 for 24 from the floor, 7 for 8 from the fall line. It's the best performance I ever saw offensively, ever. Lance Fanio played at Springfield's Tech High and first saw Dan playing a game against Powerhouse Commerce. You could see his passion when he played. You could see his, um, his courage, his confidence. Um, and you can see that he really enjoyed playing also. Lance later became Trant's teammate and roommate at Clark University. He could shoot from very deep, and that was before the three-pointer. Uh, he had very quick feet. Um, he liked to make the fancy pass. Um, and he was just a, a really good ball player. The Boston Celtics chose Dan as the last pick, number 228, in the 1984 college draft. Although the Celtics cut him, he went on to play professionally in Ireland for a few years. Trapp married his wife Kathy, and in 1991 moved his family, which included three children, Jessica, Daniel, and Alex to Long Island. 
Here he worked for several brokerage firms before joining Cantor Fitzgerald. On September 11, 2001, Tara was on Flight 11 out of Boston, heading for California with six other employees of TJX to tour stores on the West Coast. When I knew it was her, I got up and I, I started to wobble and I said, God, just get me, get me, a, get me to the phone. And I don't know, I just, you know, you just, you know, you get a spiritual lift and he got me through that day. And I went down to St. Mary's Church and I said a prayer for her. Anne recalls the last time she spoke to Brian. About 10, 15, September 10th, he called and said he was thinking about us. He just wanted to tell us how much fun Layla had at her first day of preschool. Anne was teaching at Southwick High when she saw the attacks on a school TV. So we immediately tried to get in touch with, you know, his wife, Judy, um, and the circuit lines were going crazy. And it was unbelievable. I mean, it still seems like a bad dream. They never did find any remains. He was right on the 104th floor, right above where the plane hit. So hopefully he perished immediately and wasn't suffering. Fania was in New York visiting the trance on September 10th. He gave Dan tickets to a Red Sox-Yankees game for his birthday. Lance, Dan, and his sons went to the game. It was rained out, so they came back early. The next morning, Dan left for work. We were just sitting around the table having a bagel and coffee and looking at pictures uh, from the 40th birthday party, and, and that's when a call came in from Dan. He made one call to his wife. He told them that he, he loved her and um, the kids and take care of the kids. In 2012, the sons of Aaron decided to build a memorial to remember the three Westfield natives who died that tragic day. Tara was 30, Brian 41, and Dan 40. Pat Murphy, the former director of the club, came up with the idea. Being a bricklayer by trade, I thought of maybe I could build something for him. All the materials were donated, including the stone, which is New England granite. It was a, a real kind of tender, loving thing to do, and it gave me an awful, an awful lot of satisfaction to do it. Every year since 2002, the Sons of Aaron hold a ceremony on the anniversary of 9-11. Last year, various family members attended, including Dan's mother and siblings, Jim Shea and his children, Ann Murphy and her mom, as well as town dignitaries. Our family, and I know the family of the other two from Westfield, truly appreciate the commitment the Sons of Aaron made to establish a wonderful memorial and tribute to these three young people who perished so unnecessarily. And I know for our family, this gives us a place to go to honor Brian's memories. It certainly has less of the grief and to realize that you have a community that supports you and support the grief that you've gone through. For Real to Real, I'm Steve Kiltonic.